Hey, welcome back to what I think is I'm calling my, my indie dev check-ins. It has been about three months. This is my 111th day as a full-time solo indie developer, and it's going fine. I want to tell you it's going amazing and that I'm about to release a game or that I'm failing miserably and I need your help, but it, it, the, the truth is it's just fine. There's some days where I am making so much progress and I'm feeling kind of a fire underneath my butt and I'm I'm driving for it, but there's other days where I just want to sit on the couch and eat potato chips and uh, watch uh, watch the new season of House of Dragons. And I want to let you know and maybe just let myself know that that's okay, that life ebbs and flows. It's a lesson I'm constantly relearning myself. And so today I thought it'd be a great time to share some of my lessons I've been relearning in these last three months, especially from a solo dev perspective, because I imagine a lot of you watching are solo developers and are wanting to know what it's like to be a full-time solo game developer. And so the first lesson is the scope of the game. You have to scope a game correctly. And I tried to make my dream game. I had these big ideas for this mining system and a RPG system and a crafting system for the gear that was kind of like a Path of Exile situation, but maybe smaller and a single player experience. But boy, I got two months into that prototyping phase and it just, I got stun locked by how big and deep some of the systems had to be for me to make it a quote unquote good game that I'd be proud of. And so especially as I've been looking at games from the recent Next Fest, I've realized the most successful indie games, they have one interesting idea that they explore, one twist on a familiar genre, and they say, what would it be like if X? And then that if X, that interesting idea, is enough to hook us in as players to see what the manifestation of that one idea looks like given a certain genre. And so that's what I'm trying to to do moving forward is finding familiar ideas that I can then take an interesting hook on and change and hopefully do these things that I can make a game in a month or two, not a year or two, and I can learn really quickly. I can refine my development pipeline from start to finish and become really good at all the different things that go into making a game by yourself. The second big lesson I haven't written down because I'm a silly monkey and I forget things often. Ah is to run fast and fail fast. Run really quickly. A lot of my struggles in the last couple months have been when I get into analysis paralysis of trying to make the best decision, trying to make a decision that will be the forever decision. That's just not realistic. I've made so many dang mistakes of systems I spent days putting in only to rip out or weeks to putting in or, or really whole systems that I end up giving to my players and they say, this isn't fun, Aramis. And I had to change it all together. So, with that hindsight of those mistakes, wait until you have hindsights to double down on your decisions. And that's something that I need to constantly remind myself is I'm a, the best when I run fast. It's why I like game jams, especially one that's like a 48 hour game jam, is by definition you have to run fast, make decisions fast, go with your gut and just move forward because you only have so much time. And I find for me personally, driving forward toward a goal and trying to run as fast as possible of implementing different systems and mechanics to see what works and what doesn't work has led to the most success. You can always change things. Games are never finished, they're just released. And even when they are released, like my game Chess Survivors, I can keep patching it and changing stuff. It's not something set in stone. You can easily patch stuff. This isn't a PS2 game you got back in 2001 where it's just, that's the version of the game you have. We get a we, we get a unique opportunity to continually patch things and to learn from people playing our games. Even if it's just a few people playing it, I guarantee you're gonna learn and grow from those people's feedback and you should listen to it and think about it critically. The last little piece of uh, kind of lesson I've been learning here is that trying to make a good game is really, really hard. And it's hard because it puts pressure. I. It's, it's, it's a consequence almost of having a Twitch channel that I'm streaming on uh, daily and a YouTube channel is people will see ideas and they'll say, this is awesome, I wanna play this game, I think your game is good. And that feedback is helpful, but it almost sells in my head that I'm making a good game. It almost sells in my head that I'm making something that needs to be of a certain quality. And that quality sinks back into the first two decisions of trying to make and design big systems that are fun and interesting or uh, you know, really design something out and sit with it and not run fast with it and really let it percolate and, and, and become a good idea. 
but that's hard. That puts a lot of pressure on me to make the right decision. And that kind of puts me in this analysis paralysis mode. And so if I'm instead just trying to make a game that I've designed and make a game that I'm proud of and make a game that I think is fun, I'll let the rest of it all happen. And, and I'm constantly fighting that idea, constantly fighting that idea that I want to make a good game, that I want to make a hit game, because that's the promise of being a solo developer. You can publish a game on Steam and it could blow up. It could have a viral hit and you could make hundreds, if not millions of dollars selling that game. That's a seductive idea, but it's a dangerous idea at the same time that I need to forget about. I just need to make games, learn as much as possible, as quickly as possible, and then keep grinding it out again and again and again. And I think part of that is just not trying to make a good game, just trying to make the next game, get another game released, get something out the door that you're proud of, that you're, you think is fun, that's challenged you in a new way. And I guarantee, and I'm, I'm talking as much to myself as I am to you, I guarantee you'll learn more. One of the uniquely cool things about game development is you can park your games over on itch.io and you can have a long list of all the games and prototypes you've made and you can play them. You can scroll through and click through and play each one to see how much you've grown from a design perspective, from a UX perspective, from the bugs in your game perspective to the polish you put in your menus and the sound effects. And this, you can, you can see and track how much you've grown over the years. And I think that's uniquely interesting. Now, I have my stream in about 30 minutes. I'll be over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Amos. I'd love to see you there. I'll stop rambling. Thank you for hanging out with me and supporting me along my journeys. I've been Aramis. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.